Hey guys, it's Kyla at the MJC, and today we're going to go through the filing instructions for the name change forms for uh, adults and for minor children 14 and older. But before I get started, I have a couple of pieces of information to give you guys, a couple of caveats here. The first is that nothing in this video is intended to be legal advice. It is a video, and it is a video entirely about procedural information. Uh, so it's not a, a good resource for uh, questions about should you uh, complete these forms, will it accomplish what you're wanting it to, is it what's in your best interest, and those sorts of things. And again, because it's a video, I'm really not able to analyze your specific situation. If you do have questions about your situation, you can get brief legal advice for free here in Milwaukee County through the Marquette Volunteer Legal Clinic. If you're not located in Milwaukee County, you can contact the Clerk of Courts for your county to find out what resources are available in your area. The second piece of information is just that uh, this uh, form, this checklist, is accurate as of the time of recording. So we're recording this on December 16th of 2020, and it is accurate at that time. But, as most of you probably know, we are in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic right now, and uh, these, these rules may change either as the situation with the pandemic changes or hopefully uh, in the future when we are to the point where we're back to more or less normal services. Uh, so, just be aware that uh, the further you are from December 16th of 2020, the more likely it is that some of these things have changed. If you found this video either through our website or if you were given the link by a volunteer, then I assume that most of the information uh, remains substantially correct. Um, but if it's either uh, if the pandemic has ended or if it is a very long time since this was recorded, or if uh, you just kind of found it on the open internet, uh, you may want to double check to make sure that these procedures are still correct in your time. All right, so let's hop into the checklist. We're going to start off with just a roadmap, sort of walking you through the forms you need, the fees, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so the first thing is what forms do you need? So you'll need to gather all the forms uh, and fill them out. You need the petition for name change for an adult. Uh, and you can see that is this form here. So this uh, form, obviously yours will be filled out. Uh, this one is not filled in, but you should have filled yours out. And there are videos on our site if you need help filling that out. Uh, you'll also need the notice and order for name change form. So that's this one. And again, should be all filled out, should have the correct uh, a uh, newspaper down there. And last but not least, you'll want the order for name change form. And that's this one. And again, should be filled out. Uh, in addition to those forms, you may need a fee waiver. So there are some fees associated with filing this motion. It costs $168 just to file the motion with the court. That fee can be waived. So if you look at that $168, and you say, you know what, I can't afford that fee. Then you can fill out the fee waiver form and provide proof of your income or proof of public assistance to ask the court to not make you pay that $168 fee. Uh, and so if you did end up doing the fee waiver form, that would be this one. Again, just a little two page form here that as you'll see does need to be notarized. And then also, <clears throat> excuse me, the fee waiver order form, which looks like that. And so uh, you would fill that one out as well and get proof of income or proof of public assistance. Uh, so a month's worth of pay stubs, a, an award letter for unemployment, a, um, if you receive public assistance, uh, the My Access app for food share or Badger Care, the little landing page where it's got the stick figures uh, that say, you know, that say for this month these people in your family receive these benefits. Uh, you can also get a printout of that from the online account. Uh, so you would need that if you're wanting to do a fee waiver. If you just plan to pay the 168 bucks, then you don't need to do those things. 
Another fee for you guys to be aware of is there is a $125 or a $100 fee for publication in the newspaper. That fee can't be waived with the fee waiver, so that's one that you'll just have to pay, unfortunately. Uh, the general process is that you will get everything you need to file, you will file everything at the courthouse, you'll publish a notice of your name change in the newspaper, and then you'll attend your hearing, at which, for most people, that's where they'll change your name. So I'm now going to go through these steps in more detail with you guys. In some people might say excruciating detail. Uh, so the first step is to gather everything you need to file. So that is where you are going to review the forms to make sure they're correct. You're going to print them out. You're going to sign them and get them notarized if necessary. And you're going to make some copies. So we'll go through each of these steps. Um, the first thing is reviewing the forms. If you did the forms on your own, there may not be a lot of review needed, but if the MJC helped you fill out the forms, you'll want to make sure uh, that you make any edits or additions that your volunteers noted here. So if it says, you know, add your middle name on page one, question four, you would go to the form, um, you would go to, you know, page one, question for, looks like it's an address, not name. So sorry guys, I got my questions mixed up, but um, you would write in the changes in the section your volunteers indicated. You'll also want to make sure that names are spelled right, that addresses are right, and that phone numbers are right. Because doing our services remotely, it's harder for us to confirm those things. So you should double check uh, everything. Once you have reviewed the forms and you're satisfied with them, if they are not in printed format, so if they weren't um, mailed to you or if uh, you didn't have a packet that you were working on and the volunteers were just explaining the steps to you, then you'll need to print everything off. If you have somewhere to print, if you have your own printer, if you have a friend or a family member with a printer, awesome. You can use them as a resource. Uh, or if you can print at work or, you know, sort of wherever it is you could print. If you don't have somewhere to print, uh, the Milwaukee County Law Library is a place where you may be able to print or copy. They have been closed intermittently this winter because of the coronavirus pandemic when the cases go up. So we recommend calling this phone number, 414-278-4900, to confirm when they are open and to confirm that they will have printing and copying services available on the date when you plan to come in. If you don't want to wait for the library or if you call and they say that they're not available for those services right now, uh, you can also print and make copies at FedEx Kinko's, uh, many package stores like U the UPS store or mailboxes, etc. Uh, you can make copies and print. You can do it at big uh, like Office Depot or Office Max type stores. Uh, you can also check the local libraries. If your local library is open, they may also have printing and copying services. Um, and I know that we have heard anecdotally from some people that while the bigger libraries in the city aren't all open, that some of these smaller suburban libraries are opening. Um, so you might check if you've got one of those nearby, that could be open, even if the larger library near you isn't. Uh, so anyway, you'll make sure that you get it printed. After you've printed these forms, you will sign them. Please note that the fee waiver does need to be notarized. Um, but you can sign the rest of these so the petition can be signed and the other two actually don't need signatures. And then you will go ahead and you'll make two copies of each form. And you can see if you ever need to know how many copies you need, you can look over here in the copies column, original plus two photocopies. Uh, so you'll make all the copies. Uh, anything that needs to be notarized, so those of you that are using a fee waiver, the fee waiver does need to be notarized. Uh, you can get it notarized at the courthouse. You'll want to make sure that you bring a photo ID with you. And then what can happen is you'll go to room 104. Uh, you will show them your photo ID and they'll be able to notarize the fee waiver. You'll then go up to room 609 in the courthouse. That's where they'll approve that fee waiver. And then after it's approved, you go back to room 104 to file. So once you have gathered everything, you have signed everything, you reviewed everything, you've made all the copies, everything's printed, everything's ready to go. That's when you're ready to file at the courthouse. You will take all of the forms, so the original plus the two copies of each of those forms and the fee waiver if you're using it, the approved fee waiver, you'll take those to room 104 of the Milwaukee County Courthouse. 
Uh, the Milwaukee County Courthouse is 901 North 9th Street, and they are open for filing from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on weekdays. Uh, you will submit everything to the court, and once you submit it, you will be sent a hearing date. So you'll turn in the paperwork, and then you'll have to wait a bit, and you should hear back from the court with a hearing date. Uh, it may take a few weeks for you to hear back, so please be patient. Uh, if it has been over a month since you filed and you haven't received anything, you can reach out to the court directly, or you can contact us at MJC Divorce to try and help you figure out what your next steps are. Uh, so, once you get those papers back, then you need to publish notice of your name change in an approved newspaper um, for your county. So those of you who are here in Milwaukee County, the two cheapest newspapers that we are aware of that are also approved for this uh, are the Mo Milwaukee Community Journal and the Daily Reporter. Um, both do require payment up front, uh, but other than cost, we don't know of any difference between the two papers. Uh, so you have the Milwaukee Community Journal, they're over on MLK Drive. We've got a phone number for them here, 414-265-5300, and theirs costs $100, last we knew, for all three weeks. The Daily Reporter is over on Michigan, uh, and their phone number, 414-276-0273. Uh, their cost is $125 for all three weeks. If you are not located in Milwaukee County, so if you filed your name change in another county, we would recommend contacting the clerk of courts for your county to see if they can give you the names of approved uh, newspapers in your county. So make sure that it is an approved it is an approved newspaper for your county. Once the newspaper has run the notice, they're going to send you something called proof of publication. Uh, once you get that proof of publication of the name change, you're going to want to get it to your judge before your hearing. Um, they may give you instructions on how to get the paperwork to them, that, that proof. If they don't, then we would recommend making a copy for your records that you keep with you and then turning the original proof of publication into room 104 of the courthouse. Once you've done all those things, then you just need to uh, attend the hearing with you. You'll want to make sure that you have, oops, got a little typo here, uh, that you'll want to have an original birth certificate with you and also a copy of the proof of publication. And again, if the court gives you further direction on how to submit the original birth certificate or anything like that, do follow any directions they provide you, uh, but this is the information that we have at this point. Your hearing will most likely take place remotely by phone or by Zoom, uh, which is an audio video uh, conferencing service. The court will send you instructions on how to either call in or to join using video. Uh, and then once you have that, uh, you'll follow those directions to join the hearing at the set time. Well, those are all the steps for getting your name change filed. Uh, I hope that this was helpful. If you guys have additional questions, you can always reach us, at least during pandemic times, at mjcdivorce at gmail.com. So, until next time, thank you all for listening, and I hope that you all go out and represent yourselves well.